A fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Warm Silver. Let's go, me fellow. Hail Silver. Away. hushed as the widow mills lay waiting for death. The doctor stood near as the dying woman spoke in weak and pleading voice to Mrs. Marlin, a neighbor from a nearby ranch whom the widow had asked to see. Please, Mary, for just a little while, take, take my boy, my little son, until he gets over the shock of my leaving. I, I don't know what to say. I, I have a boy of my please, own, Tom. And please do this for me. We, we've been friends for so long. But your boy, Bob, won't your mother-in-law in Rockville want to take him? She wrote you know that... No, not, not right now. Bob mustn't go to her right now. She's a sharp old woman. If Bob could be with you and with your Tom for just a little while. All right, Stella. I'll, I'll take Bobby for a month or two. Promise. Mary, promise you will. I'll promise. Now, you rest a bit. Perhaps you'll feel better. Stella. Stella. Oh, Dr. Craig, I think... It's all over, Mrs. Marlin. She's dead. Oh. oh, poor Stella. Have you known her long, Mrs. Marlin? Has she lived around here very long? Stella and her husband lived here on this ranch and, until almost 12 years ago. Oh. Her husband died just just before my boy was born. I, I I remember it so well because the old doctor was available and Stella practically saved my life. They stopped the stage out on the trail and brought in a doctor at the last minute. He was on his way to St. Louis. I see. I had a difficult time, so I remembered little, but... When he saw it was out of danger, he went on. And 
start. Stella nursed me until I was well again. I noticed her boy when I came in. Yes. Right after my boy was born, Stella left here. She leased the ranch. While she was away, her boy was born. She came back two years ago. Too bad the father didn't live to see his son. Bobby seems like a nice boy. Yes. Yes, he is. He and my boy Tom are about the same age as you see. Well, Doctor, I'll find the boy and take him home with me as I promised. I'll, I'll break the news to him as, as gently as I can. It was three weeks later when the doctor decided to drop by the Marlin Ranch and see how Bobby Mills was getting along. The doctor was in the large living room talking to Mrs. Marlin. How is Bobby getting on, Mrs. Marlin? I suppose with two boys you have your hands full. <laughs> yes, doctor, I really do. <laughs> Bobby's a lovable boy and he should make a good playmate for my Tom. Tom seems to resent any attention that's given to Bobby. Consequently, they get into frequent fights. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to send Bobby to his grandmother before long. Well, now, that's too bad. The widow Mills rather dreaded having the boy go to live there, but I suppose he'll have to sooner or later. Hey, I'm awful hungry. Well, Bobby, how are you getting along here with the Marlins? I'm not Bobby. My name's Tom, and I live here. Yes, oh. this is my son, Doctor. Well, go into the kitchen, Tom, and get some milk. All right, Mom. And I want some bread, too. Funny, I could have sworn that was the Mills lad. Of course, I've seen him only a couple of times, but... Now that you mention it, the boys do look somewhat alike. I've never thought of that before. <laughs> Naturally, I think my own boy's better looking. <laughs> of course. Where's Tom, Mother Marlin? In the kitchen, getting something to eat. Oh, I'm hungry, too. All right. Go along and eat with Tom. Yes, ma'am. Since you mentioned it, I... See the resemblance. I think it's remarkable. Hey, give me that. You took the biggest piece. I did not. Your piece is just as big as this one. Give it to me. I'll take it away from you. You better not try it. Come on. Give me See what I mean, Doctor? Mm. Well, I'd better go out and settle this before they start a real fight. That evening, after the boys were sleeping, Mrs. Marlin sat down to have a serious talk with her husband, Bill. Bill, I, I'm afraid we're going to have to send Bobby to his grandmother sooner than we intended. Oh, now, Mary, what's the hurry? From what I hear of that old curmudgeon, Mrs. Mills, a poor kid would have a heck of a time. Oh, but, Bill, you're not around her in the day. Bobby and Tom go from one fight to another. They just oh. don't agree on anything. <laughs> Well, that sort of squabbling doesn't mean anything, Mary. It's good for him. I used to battle with my brother Lou all the time. I'm sort of getting to like that, Bobby. Seems like my own boy at times. Well, just the same, I think. Look, Mary. Tom was born that month that I was away. If it hadn't have been for Stella Mills, well, maybe you or Tom might not be here now. Let's keep the kid a while longer. All right, Bill, but... Sure hard on me to hear them at each other's throats every five minutes. I'm bringing a couple of ponies over from the bar spread tomorrow. Just barring them for the boys to ride. That ought to keep them quiet a while. <laughs> Bill, the only trouble with you is you're too soft-hearted. But I like you for it. The boys will get a surprise when they see those ponies. I'll see what happens then. <laughs> following morning, Bobby and Tom stood beside Mrs. Marlin on the ranch house porch. Their faces were aglow with excitement as they waited. Well, how long do we have to wait, Mom? Oh, now, Tom, don't be so impatient. Why can't you wait quietly like Bobby does? Well, it isn't his father that's bringing something to show us. That's why Bobby don't get tired of waiting. Now, Tom, don't say that. But it's true. Daddy's my father. But, but he told me I could... Call him Daddy sometimes if I wanted but to. But he isn't, really. Oh, Tom, now stop at this instant or I'll send you inside. But, Mom, why should Bobby... Quiet, Tom. That's all right. That's all right. I don't remember ever, ever having a dad. <laughs> fellow don't have a dad, will he? <coughs> oh, Dan. <laughs> Dan, oh, Bobby. He has 
Let me dry away those tears, darling. Oh, dear. Now, it wouldn't do to let Daddy Marlin see one of his boys weeping, now, would it? No, ma'am. Oh, both of you, close your eyes, Greg. Daddy's coming now with a surprise. Easy now, easy there. Hey, boys, look here. What? Ponies. Oh, are, are you going to let us ride them? Well, sure. Come on down oh, here. Golly. Oh, golly. Gee, look Jeez. at those Take ponies. Take it easy, boys. Oh. You'll scare them away. <laughs> I want this one. Now, see here, Tom. You just wait till we oh, decide. Oh, it's all right, Daddy Marlin. Tom can take that one. This one's nice, too. All right, then. Hit leather, both of you. Let's see how you ride them. Oh, easy, boy. But I can ride better than you, Bobby. Daddy showed me how to ride. I didn't have anyone to show me how, but well, I can ride pretty well. Now, be careful, both of you, and don't ride very far. All right, cowpokes. Hit the trail. Come on, there. Get up, boy. Get up, boy. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look at them go, would you? <laughs> <laughs> they certainly are happy together right now, Bill. Yeah. Say, hey, uh, maybe we better keep Bobby here for good, Mary. Uh, now, Bill, we'll wait a while before we make a serious decision like that. Come on in and have some coffee. <laughs> We better not go any farther, Tom. Maybe we ought to turn back now. Oh, you're always worrying. Hey, look, there's a creek just ahead. Come on, get up there. Get, get up, up, boy. Ho, oh, ho oh, there. Ho, oh, boy, ho. Oh. oh, golly, that looks cool. Easy, boy. Let's go swimming. We better not. We've come a long way from home, and well, anyway, there's a current in there. And it looks strong, too. I guess you can't swim. That's why you won't go in. But I'm going in. I can, too, swim. But I'm not going in. I'm scared, cat. <laughs> I'm almost ready. I'll watch the ponies. They might leave us if we don't watch them. Well, you better not swim long, either. I'm going to get a running start and dive right in. Hey, you better not dive in, Tom. You don't know what might yeah, happen. Yeah, go! Tom, where are you? He, he must have his head on the rock. Tom, hold on, Tom. I'm coming. Tom! Tom! Oh, he's being carried down the stream. I gotta get to him. I just gotta. Meantime, two horsemen leisurely followed the trail along the bank of the creek. They were the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto. We'll soon be at the mission, Tonto. Isn't much farther. Ah. It'd be good to see Padre and Kimasabi. Yes. He'll be expecting us. I remember the last time we were there. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 Tonto, heard someone calling. Huh? That cry for help came from down the creek. Come on, Tonto. Get him up, scout. Look, Kimasabi. Boy clinging to a rock in midstream. Ah, looks like him holding someone else. Water plenty deep there. Current strong. Yes, I know. Oh, 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 if he loses his hold, he'll be dashed to pieces over the fall just uh, below. It's not good. Here, take my guns. I'm going after them. Me come to you. No, go. you move along the bank. Keep your lariat ready. Uh, but it's dangerous for you to I've go. I've got to get to them. Help! Help! I'm slipping! Hold on, son. Although the Lone Ranger had entered the stream above the position of the boys in the water, he had to fight the strong current in order to keep from being carried past them. With long, powerful strokes, he gradually fought his way until finally he reached out and grasped the rock Bobby clung to. I can't hold on. You, you're holding another boy. Yes, he said. I can't let him drop. I'll get you to shore somehow. Don't be frightened. Here, I'll hold him. You grasp my shoulder. Love all, keep your head, son. Yes, sir. Here he is. He slipped away. Tom got under. Bring to the rock, quick. I'll get him. Now, come back. You'll both be carried over the falls now. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. As Bobby tried to transfer the unconscious Tom to the Lone Ranger, Tom suddenly slipped away into the current. Leaving Bobby clinging to the rock in midstream, the Lone Ranger immediately dived after Tom. Come back! You'll both be drowned! I have it. What are we going to do? Take, take it easy, son. You've been very brave so far. Hold out a little longer. Keep it coming! Keep it coming! Oh, you'll learn it, Tonto. Now, son, get you out of this in no time. Tonto will pull us out one at a time. With the aid of Tonto and his lariat, the boys and the Lone Ranger were finally rescued from the fast-flowing stream. A short time later, Tonto and the Lone Ranger were on the bank, working over the exhausted Bobby and the unconscious Tom. This one will be all right, Tonto. How about the unconscious boy? Him get cut on head. But me think him be all right with plenty good care. Good. Tom. Where's Tom? Don't, don't let him Easy, jump. easy, son. Tom's going to be all right. Don't worry. Ponies. Our ponies. We'll find your ponies. Now, you lie quiet and rest a while. This one. Him breathe better now. But him need looking after Kimasabi. Otto, I'll care for the boys while you go upstream and get the ponies. Then we'll take them where they can be properly cared for. The mission is closest. Ah, it good to take them to mission. Padre see them get well. Me go get ponies. Then we go to mission. <laughs> The Lone Ranger and Tonto took the two boys to the mission where the Padre made them comfortable. The boys were put on cots in a room apart and were soon sleeping normally. After a couple of hours, the Padre and the Lone Ranger went in to observe the boys and found them awake. Well, my son, how do you feel? I feel all right now, sir. Where are we? Well, you're at the mission. This is the Padre. Oh, Bobby told me not to go into the water. I hit my head when I dove. Bobby saved me. That, that masked man saved both of us. We'll have to get word to your people. What's your name, son? I'm Tom Marlin, sir. William Marlin's boy? Yes, Padre. You're fortunate, my son, to have such a brave little boy as Bobby for a brother. Oh, he's not my brother. Not your brother? No, sir. He's Bobby Mills. He's staying with us for a while. You see, his, his mama, she died. Oh, I understand. But I wish he was my brother now. I, I wouldn't fight with him anymore. Well, he saved me. I wish I was too. Someday soon they'll send me to Grandmother Mills, and I don't want to go. Oh, I wish I never had to go there. Sometimes, son, our creator moves in strange ways. Perhaps you won't have to leave the ones you seem to love so much. Oh, Padre, I'd better send Tonto to notify Mr. Marlin that the boys are here and safe. Yes, of course. But before you do that, I have something to tell you. Oh? Rest now, boys. We'll return later with food. It's strange, but I was under the impression that those boys were brothers. There's such a strong resemblance, Father. My son, I have a story to tell you that may clear up a great deal of misunderstanding. About 12 years ago, a ranch hand from the Marlin Ranch arrived at the mission asking for aid. I returned to the ranch with him. After hearing the Padre's story, the Lone Ranger decided to ride with Tonto to the Marlin Ranch. It was almost dusk when they reined up before the ranch house. Oh, sir, oh, 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 you wait here, Tonto. Uh -huh. Mr. Marlin? Yes, come in. Thank you. What the mask? Well, that doesn't matter. I, uh, came about your son. The boys were in danger, but they're safe now. You came about... Oh, so that's it. Well, I got you covered, mister. That isn't necessary. You see, I came here to... Shut up. You. I'll do all the talking. 
You picked up those boys, and recognizing one of them as my son, you came here to ask for ransom before I can get him back. Now, see here, Mr. Marlowe. I said I... keep quiet. Mary! Mary! Bill, what... Bill, what's that madman doing here? This outlaw is holding our boy and Bobby, that's what. He had nerve enough to come here to try to collect ransom money. Listen, if you'll let me explain, you'll I explain, can... explain all right. Mary, get to the back door. A couple of the boys washing up out there. Get them in here pronto. Oh, yes, of course, Bill. I don't want trouble with you, Mr. Marlin. You're making a great mistake. Naturally, if you're worried about your Keep son... Keep your hands up and shut up. What's wrong, boss? Well, I'll be... What all hoot? Throw your guns on him, boys. Sure thing. I got him covered. Mary, get the rest of the hands here. Have one of them ride for the sheriff. Oh, Bill, make him tell it that the boys are... The boys are safe, Mrs. Marlin. If your husband will give me a chance to you talk... You talk at the proper time, mister. Right now, we're going to find out... Two drop Hey, look. An engine in the open doorway. Got two guns on oh, us. Please. If they're shooting, somebody will be killed. Bill, maybe... All I asked for was a chance to explain, Mrs. Marlin. There's no need for gunplay. Now you listen. Well, go ahead and talk, mister. You'll find both boys at the mission under the care of the padre. They were almost drowned, but now they're all right. Oh, those poor boys... Oh, Bill, we must go to them. I'm not so sure this stranger's telling the truth. How do I know that there is... You'll isn't... have to take my word for it right now. You come, Mel Kimasabi. That's how we leave. Nothing we can do, boss. Oh, that Indian's got us under his sights. They're not convinced, Toto. Come on, we'll go back to the mission. Let's go. Easy. Home, silver. Let's go. It was later that night when Bill Marlin and his wife arrived at the mission and were met at the door by the Padre. Padre, I'm Mrs. Marlin, and this is my husband. We were told... Your that boys you... are here and safe. Come right in. Well, then... Then that mask hombre was telling the truth after all. Oh, I feel so ashamed, Bill. The way we treated him. My mask friend understands. And he has a very forgiving nature. Moreover, you owe him a great debt, my friends. You see, he saved both the boys from death in the rushing water. Oh, Bill. Nation, take it. Why didn't he say so? Oh, we tried to tell us, Bill. You wouldn't listen. No matter, since there's no harm done. Oh, the boys, where are they? Before we... you go in to see them, there's a story you must hear, my friends. And the one who should tell you is the man who saved them, my masked friend. I'll call him. Will you come in, my son? Thank you, Padre. Good evening, Mrs. Marlin. Mr. Marlin. Say, now, I guess there's things I ought to say, <laughs> but I... I get what happened at the ranch. I realize you were upset. The Padre says you have something to tell us. Yeah, something very important, Mrs. Marlin. You see, the boy Bobby saved Tom. He held him up until I could get to them. Well, I'll be darned. Mary, we really ought to keep that boy all the time. I think you will keep him. You see, Bobby is also... Your own son. What? Well, now, now, see here, I, I'm mighty fond of Bobby, but when you say that he he's... He speaks my... the truth, my friends. Well, Bobby and Tom are twins. Twins? Yes. When the boys were born, Mrs. Mills was your only attendant at first. The Padre made a short visit to the ranch. You were in a critical condition. He was told twins had been born. The doctor who was brought from the stage was known to the Padre. He verified the fact that twin boys were born to you, Mrs. Marlowe. But, but he's somewhere in St. Louis. How could After he... the Padre told me the story this afternoon, I used the quick method of telegraph. Well, this is the reply I picked up a short time ago. Hmm? I recall the incident when I was asked to leave stage and attend Mrs. Marlin 12 years ago. Twin boys were born. I left before Mrs. Marlin regained consciousness. Mrs. Mills was in attendance. Dr. Morton. Oh, then... Then Stella Mills took one of my boys to raise her own. Yes, Mrs. Marlin. Evidently, the death of her husband had affected her. She took Bobby away from you. Oh, then... Then that's why Stella made me promise to keep Bobby a while. She hoped we'd... We'd grow to love him and keep him. I'm sure that is what she hoped. Oh, oh my poor boy. And, and the thing we almost... Mary, ate. Mary. It's all right. No wonder they look so much alike. We better get to see them, Mary. Yes, they're waiting to see you. And you have the news to break to Bobby. Come, I'll take you to them. 
My sons, you have visitors for whom you've been waiting. Oh, Ma, and Daddy. Oh, golly, how glad to see you. And what about you, Bobby? Son? I, I'm glad to see you, too. I'm awful glad. But you're not really my mom and dad. Oh, but we are, son. We are. Now we know that you're Tom's real brother and our son. Honest? Are you sure? Yes, yes, darling. It's really true. You'll be ours always. Oh, golly, I got a brother. Yep, Bobby's your twin brother. He was lost a long time. But now we're finally... Heaven is due thanks for returning our lost lamb to the fold. Bobby, my son... I'm sure there's great happiness in store for you from now on. Oh, we'll sure be one happy family, Padre. If that masked man hadn't saved us, then I wouldn't ever have known I had you for a mom and dad. Uh, your bravery in saving your brother was rewarded. Oh, Bobby. My brave little Bobby. We'll be so happy together. We'll never fight either. Hmm? <laughs> I wonder. That masked man... He's done so much, and we owe him so much in the way of apologies and thanks, Padre. Who... He, he needs neither apologies nor thanks. Your newfound happiness is his reward. You see, my friends, he's the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>